We are Premier League. Say we are Premier League. We are Premier League. Say we are Premier League. Hello, and today we're doing Watford FC 2020 to 21. If I can just get it. There we go. 2020 to 21 season awards. What a year it's been for the Golden Boys. We've had highs. We've had lows in both our away shirt and our home shirt. And it's been a crazy season without fans. We've had to follow it on our screens at home, on the sofa, from Hive Live. And they've done an amazing job. And we've got to thank so many people, so many of the players. Shishko Munoz, Vladimir Ivic, because he did give us a defensive foundation. You've got to thank Cristiano, um, the sporting director. What a legend. You've got to thank, of course, Gino Pozzo, Scott Duxbury, Adam Leventhal. So many people to thank. But in this awards video, we'll be thanking all those players that have had a massive contribution to this fantastic season. We've had so many difficulties this season, but we've overcome it. And the second half of the season was just so satisfying. The way we pulled together as a team and sorted out the problems. And really, it was amazing to get automatic at the first time of asking. So from the 11th of September 2020, all the way until that game against Swansea on the 8th of May 2021, we are reviewing the championship season because now we are are Premier League. Say we are Premier League. So let's get into this video. It's going to be a very good one. Uh, make sure you smash a like on it, comment your thoughts and we will get into it. So to begin with, let me tell you what the categories are for these awards. The first award that I will be dishing out in this video is player of the season. Then we'll have young player of the season, goal of the season, match of the season, and then individual performance of the season, team performance of the season. So to distinguish with the match one, the match is like a really good match that Watford played and the team performance, a really good collective effort. And then, of course, after that, we'll be having signing of the season, defensive performance of the season and attacking performance of the season. And very much not the least important, but last up is going to be the most important result of the season, which is a difficult one. There's been so many important results, but my winners will be announced in this video. So smash a like on it and uh, get your thoughts in the comments. Do you disagree with any of these? If so, what would you give for some of these awards? So let's kick off with the big one, the player of the season. And it's so difficult because there's so many players that have contributed to be a brilliant, brilliant team effort. And we've not had, you know, too many star players who've done it all season. You look at teams like Brentford, fair play to them in the playoffs. We wish them all the best. But they've had a few couple of really individual gems, the likes of Ivan Tony and Brian and Buermo. But Watford, it seems, don't really have that. We have a collective spirit. And especially in the second half of that season, it really was clear for all to see. So it's really tough to decide this one. You've got to give a shout out, of course, to Brazilian forward Joao Pedro, who's adapted so well to life in the championship. You know, he came in in the end of that 1920 season, got a few substitute appearances, and he was heralded as the next big thing, the guy with all the potential. And, you know, he's had very little game time before this season, but he's really shown he's adapted to life. He's adapted to the more minutes under his belt, and he's just been... A very, very nice striker. He's got this very good team ethic and work rate is absolutely second to none. He always presses. He always shows his commitment and he's brilliant at linking up the play. You know, threading those passes through to the fullbacks and to the wingers like Saar and Semma and just linking it up really nicely. He does have a very good, you know, style. He His hold up is very impressive and he's just done a lot this season that is you know, certainly to be admired. Some big goals, some amazing goals and some great performances. So got to give a shout out for me for Joao Pedro. But there are a few main contributors and a few main contenders, really, for this player of the season. Oh, here we go. 
it's all kicking off. They know that it's getting intense because it's a big award. But um, no, this is a tough one because of the fact there's so many good players this season. So who are the contenders for this award? Let's list them through now. Player of the season. We have, first of all, Will Hughes. Then we've got Tom Cleverley. Then Ismaila Saar. Then Kiko Feminia. And finally, we're going to give a contender of Francisco Sierrauta. Those are our uh, nominees for the player of the season. But who is my winner? Well, it's a really tough one. For me, it's between three players. I, I nearly said two there. No, three players. And those three players are Will Hughes, Ismail Assar, and Kiko Feminia. You can easily have a shout of Cleverly because he's put in week in, week out, lots of commitment. And you can also say Sierra who's had an amazing impact in that defence. Such a unit, so solid. But it has to be, for me, between those three. With Kiko Feminia, he's been the most consistent player for us all season. And you've got to remember, start of the season, we didn't have a left back. He did so well to show his versatility, show his flexibility in playing that position. And he's just been consistent all season. The sacrifices he's made. He missed the birth of his child for that game with Nottingham Forest earlier on in the season. And he has just been absolutely brilliant from day one. His crossing in, his attacking play, his defensive tracking back, and at times his last ditch tackling has been fantastic. That right hand side has been brilliant this season. The link up, we've looked so, so dangerous in that part of the pitch with Saar and Kiko Feminia. They're always seeming to be on the same wavelength and they like to pass to each other and, you know, thread each other through to really link up that attack. So Kiko Feminia, if we take him out of this side all season, it would have been a very different result, I think, because he's been absolutely fantastic. So Kiko Feminia, a very strong mention, but he's not my winner, just. Then we've got, of course, Will Hughes. And you can't deny this guy has been amazing all season. And when he came out of the side, you saw the effect it had. He just does all the dirty work. He really does, you know, go very unnoticed in this championship team. And at the end of the day, he just has been so good ever since he came in from the 2017-18 season. And he just isn't a player all about goals, but he's about doing the dirty work, doing the, the work that goes unnoticed and linking up that play. You know, he can provide such a protection for that back four in front of the likes of Sierra and William Trooster Kong. But he just is so good at, you know, getting those little pockets of space and winning the ball back for Watford on the attack and set us off on the pivot on the you know attack it is just a key in that ingredient to go forward and get goals he is a fantastic player of course scored in the game against his former side versus Derby County this season but he could have had many more goals he had a few chances but it's been an amazing season for Will Hughes however he is not my player of the season instead my player of the season has to go to Ismaila Saar. Now, I've heard a lot of people say, it's got to be Sierra it's got to be Nathaniel Chalaber. And we'll get to Chalaber a bit later because he, in my opinion, has been the most improved player of the season. That man, Chalaber, has matured from a boy to a man. And, you know, his performances in the Premier League were often up and down and he showed some great performances under Nigel Pearson. But we just don't get that enough from Chalaber. And the days of 2013 when he was, you know, rocketing in that absolute screamer away to Leicester, those kind of performances we saw more of this season. And he's just been so, so mature, so, so impressive. And, you know, taking that armband on really did change his game and change his style. And he's just been fantastic. Some of the goals he scored this season, we'll get onto that in a second. But that goal against Birmingham, I loved it, where he just peeled around the back, scored the header, Set piece, thank you very much. And of course, the goal against Cardiff. So what a season it's been. But for me, it has to go to Ismail Asar, player of the season, because this guy is honestly so, so talented. He's our player of the season 100% because he's come up with such big moments this season. And if you take Ismail Asar out the side, I don't think we get promoted because he might, you know, have 
left at the summer, but he didn't. He showed his commitment to Watford. He was wanting Watford to get back into the Premier League and he wasn't tempted by big money. And you've got to give Ismail Assar all the credit for that. And ultimately, Saar, this season, if we hadn't have had him any of the season, it looks like promotion is a very difficult one. Maybe we go up through the playoffs, but it's just he's such a big part of the way we play. When Ismail Assar is on that right-hand side, he's so good at running at plays, showing that pace, and really just taking on defences, getting to the byline. He is fantastic in his crossing, in his strength, in his aerial ability, and, of course, in his pace. So... He adds so much to this Watford side and, you know, very much deserving to be player of the season for me. He's bringing some absolute class to this side, scored some fabulous goals against Reading and uh, also earlier on in the season. Um, he's, he's been absolutely fantastic. And yeah, he just is an absolutely brilliant player, deserves to be player of the season. And of course, a very worthy player for our top signing, our biggest signing of the club as it stands. So, yeah, hopefully he can stay next season, but he has to get the Player of the Season award. The next award is the Young Player of the Season, and we mentioned earlier, but this one has to go to Joao Pedro. There are a few contenders, of course. You know, you look at people like Stipe Pericha, Jeremy Ngakia is very, still very young. And, of course, you've got people coming through the academy, like Joseph Hungbo, who's been absolutely fantastic at times this season off the bench and of course got so unlucky with that injury he faced against Brentford but we've had a lot of really promising young talent this season and Delhi Delhi Bashiru at the start of the season looked fantastic and really unlucky to get injured in that game against Reading then you see the likes of Ben Wilmot come back from Swansea and join Watford and he's been absolutely really good this season he's been quite under the radar because he's not played all the time but when he has he's been really impressive and you know he's actually been quite attacking at times he got the assist for that goal um, up at Derby uh, away from home. So he has actually had a good season, but it's got to go to Pedro because Pedro has just made that step up so impressively. And actually, at times, we have relied on Joao Pedro for the source of our goals. And, you know, he has produced some moments of magic. That Derby goal was something special. And yeah, it was just a brilliant season for Pedro. He really can, you know, go so far and the sky's the limit for this kid. So hopefully... He will be keeping on pushing for this um, you know, season and the next season coming up. Let's see what he can do in the Premier League. But he's got to get young player of the season. All right, next is goal of the season. And this is another tough one. There's a few contenders here. Of course, Isaac success on the final day. What a screamer. The volley on the half volley against Swansea and caught Woodward. Uh, or sorry, not Woodward. Um, Freddie Woodman uh, off guard with a fantastic shot. Um, and he hasn't had a great season, so that really is saving a special one for the final day. We've got Joao Pedro against Derby away from home. This is a fantastic goal. Nathaniel Chalaber versus Cardiff. And, of course, both of Ismail Assar's goals versus Reading on Friday night. Um, the first one majestically controlled with the instep and just curls it with absolute accuracy and precision. The second one, pure power. And I've seen a lot of people give... Pedro goal of the season and Saar's second goal goal of the season but for me it has to be Nathaniel Chalaber versus Cardiff the footwork there is absolutely outstanding it is just brilliant he just shows himself to be such a technical player and to kind of predict the situation before it happens he knows which way to go which way to dribble and where the Cardiff players are the awareness the capability is fantastic from Nathaniel Chalaber and I've mentioned how he's just been absolutely revolutionary this season and he just thought in that situation so fast so quickly and it's a brilliant goal because it gets us back in the game so so quickly after going but one nil but behind to Cardiff in that crucial crucial game away from home and it just it kicks us back into the game you know kicking and screaming showing that determination to get level and it's a fantastic goal he just strokes it into that bottom left corner what a goal Goal of the season for me. So moving on to the next award, um, there are obviously a few contenders for this one, um, and that is match of the season. But I'm going to give it to Bristol City at home because this 
was the best match you could possibly want from a Watford team. 6-0, and what a response from that really, really disappointing 0-0 draw from Coventry. The change in formation was fantastic. The 4-3-3 allowed us to get that attacking input into our team, and we just played brilliantly. The team spirit was amazing. You know, that was showed by the last goal of the game, where Ismail Assar has the chance for the hat-trick. He squares it, though, to Philip Zinkenagel for his goal. First one in Watford Colours. And it's just an absolutely fantastic team performance. Some brilliant goals in there and a very, very nice win. So that is match of the season. Individual performance of the season. I'm going to give this one to Tom Cleverley against Norwich City. There's a few contenders again for this one. Um, I think it can be very much stated that, you know, Ismail Assar should get a big mention against Reading. He was massive in that game. Um, Joao Pedro as well um, at times this season has been putting in amazing performances. Um, and you've got to remember as well, the game up against uh, um, Blackburn, you know, Pedro had a wonderful game. And of course, in that game with Cardiff City, you know, Adam Messina, he, he put in an amazing performance there individually to get us our first free kick um, direct goal from, you know, that tight angle since 2016. It was such a long wait. But no, for me, it has to go to Tom Cleverley because he took that game by the scruff of the neck dictated it in the midfield, just didn't give Norwich a single chance and just played so, so well. You've also got to give a mention to Adam Messina, who had a fantastic game against Norwich on Boxing Day at the Vic. Coming back from injury, it's going to be so difficult to fit into that team and up against, you know, the team fighting for the title. But he made an absolutely wonderful last-ditch tackle on Timu Puki that I think Watford fans will never soon forget. So, yeah, you've got to give him credit. But for me, it goes to Tom Cleverley for that Norwich game. And now we've got team performance of the season. And this also comes from Norwich City away. Because, I'm sorry, off the back of that absolutely gutting M1 derby loss to Luton, we had to respond. We really, really did. And we showed so much team spirit and so much determination. And Norwich City was always going to be tough. They wanted to get promoted. They wanted to seal it. But we went there and did a job on them. Defensively, so, so superb. And going forward, that was a fantastic goal. Wonderful pass from Joao Pedro. Brilliant finish. Just guiding it home from Dan Gosling. A massive, massive goal. And to bounce back from Luton and know that with a win against High Flyers Norwich, we gave ourselves just that small chance of you know promotion in the next game. We were so, so happy after that. That was a massive, massive game and a great team performance. Signing of the season is the next one, and this has to go, in my opinion, to Francisco Sierrauta. What a season he's had. He is literally such a key player for us this season, and we need to build our defence around him next season because he has just been immense. So, so solid. His headers are so strong. He gets such great range on them, and his distribution has been brilliant at times this season. Like the Chilean Maldini, he is amazing. And there's been a lot of comparisons to Van Dyke. Maybe it's just the ponytail. But anyway, tweet the ponytail at your peril, as we said after that Cardiff game uh, with a little bust up with uh, with Aidan Flint. But no, the point is, this guy has come in since that Boxing Day game against Norwich. Ivic didn't use him. Don't know why he didn't, to be honest, because he's just been absolutely fantastic. And he has 100% been signing of the season. You've got to give credit to Jeremy Ngakia, who's, you know, put... Very much not a foot wrong this season. And of course, William Trooster Kong has been very, very good as well. But it's got to go to Sia Rauta. Right, next is defensive performance of the season. And I'm giving this one to Norwich City at home. That game against Boxing Day, we were immense in the defence. And you've got to say, Daniel Backman has had an absolutely brilliant season since he has had to come in for the injured uh, the injured Ben Foster. Um, what a few games he's had at the end of the season. And... He's just taken his chance. You know, it's going to be frustrating sitting on the sidelines, but he's been brilliant. And defensively against Norwich, we were so, so good. And that challenge I mentioned against Pukki was amazing from Messina. So, yeah, that's my defensive performance of the season. Attacking performance of the season, this has to go for me, for Preston at home. It was 4-1 in the end to Watford. And that was just the day where it all seemed to click going forward. You could argue the Bristol City game, but we've already given that one an award. And our goals against Bre Preston were absolutely beautiful. You know, that first one was, you know, just perfect. And that goal that was chipped up wonderfully by Troy Deeney into the path of Chalaba hits it on the volley. I mean, some fantastic goals and an amazing attacking performance. 
And finally, we've got most important result of the season. This is so, so tough. There's a lot of contenders once again. I think the contenders for this one are, you know, there's a, there's a few to talk about. But the main ones, I would say, would be between the teams of this. So let me just, um, let me just get it up for you people and uh, we will get through that. So where has that gone then? I just had it and now it's gone. Oh dear. Um, here it is, right. The contenders for most important result of the season. We've got Stoke City away. Massive, massive win. What a goal from Ismail Assar and a massive penalty once again. Showing the cojones, Troy Deeney. Stoke 1, Watford 2. We've also got Cardiff away from home. So Cardiff 1, Watford 2. We knew that was a big, big result and the delight in the team celebrating together as the squad at the end of the game with that Messina goal was absolutely brilliant. What a moment of the season, that Cardiff winner. Um, Norwich City at home uh, is a debatable one, but for me, Norwich City away has to be one of the most important results of the season because we knew that we were in just touching distance with the Premier League and uh, great to bounce back from Luton game. And then, of course, Reading at home. That was a massive, massive day. And you just felt maybe, just maybe, we can do this automatically after that game. Some brilliant, brilliant goals from Ismail Assar. So who do I give my most important result of the season to? For me, it's a really difficult one. And it's a toss-up between Stoke City, Cardiff and Norwich. I know Reading was big, but it wasn't as big as Norwich. So for me, this has to go to Cardiff. Now, a lot of people give Norwich, fair enough. But I just feel like Cardiff game was so, so massive in so many ways. We'd lost the first game in the reverse fixture, the first game back with fans. We didn't play well enough in that game. And the games leading up to that Cardiff game, we knew we had to start getting some results. And Stoke was big as well because it's always, you know, a tough place to go. And our away form had been poor. You know, we did it on a rainy night, night in Stoke, which is fantastic. But Cardiff was massive. We scored the own goal from Sierra Alta. So, so unlucky. And, you know, we come back, we show that fight. Chalaba with a goal of the season contender. And then, of course, Messina with the winner. So we knew 